We are making the most luxurious apple crumble slice in this recipe. It's super easy to make, tastes fantastic, and only requires a few simple ingredients to put together. Once it comes out the oven, smells fantastic and tastes absolutely delicious. Starting out, we're going to need six Granny Smith apples. We can remove both ends so it will sit flat on the bench. And then you can use a peeler or a knife just to remove that outer skin. We don't want to use this in the crumble because it doesn't break down and you'll just have these large lumps inside the crumble and it's not a very nice flavor. With that done, trim around the core and then we're going to dice these into even sized cubes. Please make sure they're the same size, that way they'll cook at the same rate. Let's then place a pot over a medium heat, add in 14 grams of unsalted butter along with those apples. Then we're going to add in 20 grams of castor or fine sugar, 1.5 grams of ground cinnamon and then 0.1 gram of nutmeg. And that's about equivalent to a quarter of a teaspoon. With that all in, give it a really good mix through and cook this for about six minutes to slightly soften the apples. And during this stage, those apples will soak up that butter and the spices, creating a beautiful earthy, warm and sweet flavor. Follow that up with half a cup or 125 milliliters of cold water. And this is going to help steam the apples, which will obviously help soften them. And then just continue cooking for about four minutes until soft. We don't want them to completely break apart. Then move them off the burner and cover with a lid and just let them sit for the time being. Now to make the crumble mix, add 165 grams of castor or fine sugar to a bowl along with 125 grams of unsalted butter, 180 grams of plain all-purpose flour, and then 4 grams of baking powder. And then use your hands to rub it through your fingertips until it forms nice fine breadcrumbs and this can be popped aside again for the time being. Last but not least for the base, add 100 grams of softened unsalted butter to a bowl along with 110 grams of castor or fine sugar. Then use a hand mixer or a stand mixer and mix this for about five minutes until nice and light and fluffy. We don't want the sugar to be anywhere seen. We just want it to be completely absorbed into that butter. Once mixed, add in one whole free range egg and then get back in there with the hand mixer or stand mixer and just mix this through for about one to two minutes just until nice and light and fluffy and everything is completely combined. Let's then add in 150 grams of plain all-purpose flour, 4 grams of baking powder and 20 milliliters of full fat milk. Then use a spatula just to gently fold this through. We don't want any lumps or clumps and this is going to form a nice smooth but slightly wet pastry or dough which is the perfect base for our crumble. Place the pastry or dough onto a lined baking pan. This is about 30 centimeter by 19 centimeter, and obviously it's got baking paper on it. And we're going to spread this out and because it's wet, it will be a little bit difficult. So you will need to use some flour, which will help push this down. Recommend just sprinkling over a little bit at a time. Don't overdo it. And just use your fingertips to gently push this through. If it becomes a little bit more wet, just add a little bit more flour, but just keep spreading it out until it's all completely sitting level. We don't want any larger bits in this, otherwise it will cook unevenly. Going back to those apples, we can then remove the lid and these will be perfectly cooked at this stage. Sprinkle them over the top of that pastry. You don't need to set it or anything or cook it beforehand. And then we're going to level this out as well. Again, making sure that it's sitting flat because if any part of this recipe is not completely level, it won't cook evenly. Last but not least, sprinkle over the crumble mix and this is gonna be again spread out evenly. Sorry for saying it so many times. And you can use a fork or your fingers for this part and I don't recommend pushing it down too much because if you make it too dense it just won't get that nice crispy shell. It will be crispy but it just won't have those nice fluffy edges that you would get from a nice rough or rustic look. Let's then take this over to a preheated oven that's at 160 degrees Celsius or 320 degrees Fahrenheit and I recommend putting it on a tray just so the apples don't boil over. It might happen, it might not, it's up to you, I just don't want you to have to clean up a big mess. And then just bake this for about 40 to 50 minutes or until beautifully golden until you have something that looks like this and then let it cool for about 30 to 40 minutes. Now once it is cool it'll be a lot easier to slice and you can slice this however you like but I like to slice it into thirds into the long strip and then just slice it straight down the center and then slice each of those halves into half again and you'll end up with 12 even sized pieces. Like I said you can cut this any way you want just do whatever is easiest for you. Once it is all cut though, you'll end up with something that looks like this and you have that beautiful crunchy pastry on the bottom, those soft warm spiced apples and that delicious crumble on the top. Store these however you like. I like to use the Lavelli containers. I'm using the 750 milliliter containers, which is what I usually use in the meal prep series. And as for shelf life, these will last six days in the fridge and six months in the freezer, but I'm using the vacuum pump, which will extract the air and actually push them an extra day in the fridge as well as an extra month in the freezer. With everything said and done, the only thing that's left to do is, of course, we can then dig in. The flavor and texture in those is absolutely incredible. It's a little bit sweet, there's lots of spices in there, and that crumble over the top literally just melts in your mouth, but still has that slight crisp bite on top. 
If you enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.